Right, I'm going to show you guys how to solve this differential equation, and this time I'll show you guys how to end up with the answer in the back of the book. And also, uh, I have done another video for you guys. You can watch that if you want to end up with the answer of Wolfgang Alpha. So check that out as well. Anyways, this right here, dy dx is equal to parentheses x minus y plus phi and square, right? As you know, this is the differential equation in the form of g of ax plus y. And the typical strategy for this is we let v equals to the function part, the ax plus y part, right? Which in this case is just the x minus y. And if you want to just end up with the answer in the back of the book, this is what you do, okay? So let's go ahead and continue from here. V is equal to x minus y, and let me just uh, go ahead and differentiate both sides. So we have dv dx equals to 1 minus dy dx. And I want to isolate the dy dx, so let me move this to the other side, and let me bring this to here. So we will have dy dx equals to 1 minus dv dx, okay? And then I can now plug in this into here, and we will have 1 minus dv dx, and this will be equal to, here is the x minus y, so we have the v, but we still have the plus phi, so let's put that down, and then we still have the parentheses, and then we square that, okay? And now, I'm going to move things around again. I want to keep the dv dx positive. I want to move this to the right-hand side, so it becomes positive, right? So, let me just move that right there, so we have dv dx, so move this to the other side, okay, so I want to make that positive. In the meantime, I have to move this to the left-hand side, so we will have the 1 minus this, parentheses, v plus 5, and square that. And now at this point, this is actually separable, so let me just go ahead and divide this on both sides. And once again, I want to emphasize, this is how you can end up with the answer in the back of the book, okay? So let me move this to the other side, by divide, so we will have 1 over this, 1 minus parentheses v plus 5, and then square, and then we have the dv here, and this is equal to dx, right? So I'm just going to multiply dx on both sides. Let's focus on this. Uh, I need to integrate both sides, but I will have to fix the denominator first. This is just 1, and then we have to multiply this out, you get parentheses v square plus 10v plus 25, and let's do the math right here. You see, it will be well, negative v squared, right? So let's do that first. And then negative times 10v, which is negative 10v, negative 25 plus 1 is negative 24. And from here, let me factor out a negative right here. And you know, um, once you factor out a negative, everything becomes positive. We can factor, factor, right? I need v and v. I want to end up with positive 24 and positive 10. I need to put on plus 6 and plus 4, okay? And let me just move the negative to the top, so this is going to give us negative 1 over parentheses v plus 6 times v plus 4, and you have the dv, this is equal to dx, all right. Okay, how can we integrate this? Well, we need to use partial fraction, isn't it? Uh, we have these two factors in the denominator already, so let me just go ahead and set this up. v plus 6, and then we add it with v plus 4, and then we have the dv, and this is equal to dx, like this. Alright, to figure out the number on top of the v plus 6, I will come here, and I will cover up the same denominator. Well, how can you make v plus 6 equal to 0? You let v equals to negative 6, and plug into here. So all in all, you end up negative 1 on the top, over negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 1 over negative 2, you get positive 1 half, and that's this number right here. Likewise, to figure out this number, we are going to plug in negative 4 into this v, right? We cover this up, and to make this equal to 0, you let v equal to negative 4. Anyways, you see, negative 1 over negative 4 plus 6, which is positive 2. So right here, we will have negative one half, right? Okay, so this is what we have. And uh, let me just multiply everything by two, so we don't have to deal with the fractions, the something over two. So let's just go ahead and do that, and let me just indicate we are multiply everything by just two. And we'll end up to have the following. This is just one over 
d plus 6, and let's bring the minus to the front, and we have 1 over d plus 4, like this and that. And this is equal to 2 times the dx, so 2 dx, and of course I should put on d phi here, d phi. Alright, integration time, right? Uh, no, just kidding, I want to write this better, d phi equals this. Here is the integration time. Integrate, integrate, left hand side we get ln absolute value v plus 6. And the derivative of v plus 6 is just 1, so dividing by doesn't matter. Bring down the minus. The derivative, of, the integral of this is just ln absolute value of v plus 4, just like this, right? And then this is equal to 2x plus c, 1. Okay, this is what we have, and you see that this is ln, we have 2 of this ln, so we can combine it because this is subtraction between ln absolute value v plus 6 over v plus 4. And this is equal to 2x plus c1. And then I'm going to try my best to isolate the v. So I will do e to this power, e to that power, they cancel, and you see v plus 6 over v plus 4 equals 2. The right hand side, we have e to the 2x, that's a function part that's ready down. And then we have to multiply by e to the c1. c1 is a constant, e is also a constant, e to the c1 is just another constant. So let's label that c2. So once you have this right here, let's go ahead, multiply both sides by v plus 4. And you see this is v plus 6 equals to c2 e to the 2x times v plus 4. Of course, now I can distribute, so this is v plus 6 equals to this times that, c2 e to the 2x times v, and then this times that, so plus 4 c2 e to the 2x, like that. Whew. I have v here, I have v here, so let's move this to the other side. In the meantime, I want to factor things out. I have 1 here, I have c2 e to the 2x, right? So let me put down 1, it becomes minus c2 like this, and then we have the e to the 2x, and then let me put down the v at the end, or I factor out the v. Well, this is the 6, let me move that to the other side. So we will have negative 6, and then we have this, right? Plus 4 c2 e to the 2x, and that's what we have. Of course, we can then divide this on both sides, so we have v equals to negative 6 plus 4 c2 e to the 2x over that, which is 1 minus c2 e to the 2x, like this. We're done, right? In terms of like we saw for the v, we isolated the v, which is wonderful. And this is the v right here. Well, we know it's x minus y. So of course, I'm going to plug in right here. And let's see what do we end up with. On the left hand side, we have x minus y. So let me just put this down in red. On the right hand side, we have this, which is that. Negative 6 plus 4 c2 e to the 2x over 1 minus c2 e to the 2x. And I want to isolate the y. I will um, bring the y to the other side, so I will get the y become positive, okay? And this will be equal to, I keep the x right here, and I move this to the other side. So I will have to subtract, so this becomes subtract of the whole thing. Negative 6, plus 4c2 e to the 2x over 1 minus c2 e to the 2x, just like that. And if you are just doing this for homework, seriously, if you just want to leave this for the answer, for me, this is great. Nothing wrong with this, this is wonderful, it's amazing, okay? But as I was mentioning, this is how you're going to end up with the answer in the back of the book. Alright. I'm going to take this and distribute it into the parentheses because on the top, there's that invisible parentheses, isn't it? So we have y equals to, we have the x right here. I take a negative and distribute it so it becomes positive, okay? Positive. Negative times negative becomes positive 6. Negative times positive becomes negative, and then we have the 4, and then the c2, and then e to the 2x. Over, the denominator stays. We still have the 1 minus c2 e to the 2x. 
Once again, this is wonderful. But in the back of the book, you may find yourself <laughs> frustrating because they have plus and plus. And this is the idea. Seriously, this is just how it is. I don't know who wrote the solution, but apparently maybe that person didn't get paid enough, so I don't know. <laughs> no, just kidding. No. So here's the deal. Here we have C2, isn't it? And as I said, C2 is just a constant. Well, we have negative C2. It's just another constant. On the bottom here, we also happen to have negative C2. Well, we can just call that to be another constant. So finally, I will just write this down as y equals to x plus 6. But instead of negative C2 like this, we'll say that to be plus C3. However, we do have to still put down the 4 because of this C2s right here, right? Because right here we have C2 and C2. If you just say 4 C2 is another constant, but it's not, it's not going to be agreeing with this one. This is just the first water differential equation. We can only end up with one constant at the end. So negative C2 is C3, but we still have to put down this 4 right here. And here's the function part, e to the 2x over 1, but negative C2, as we said, is positive C3, so we put on plus C3. And we have this function part, which is e to the 2x. That's how they end up to have the answer in the back of the book, right? This is the uh, family of solutions. And since we are done, the subscript 3 right here is not needed, so we can just erase that. Seriously, that's what we have. And um, this is just a family of solutions, right? But we do have a missing solution as well. So let me just write this down. Missing solution. It is y equals to x plus 4. And I'll leave the check for you guys to do it. And you may be wondering, how can I get this, right? Well, the idea is that you go back to this right here. You have two things in the bottom, which is no good. Whenever you are solving a differential equation, if you find yourself dividing by uh, the function in the denominator, set the factors to be zero. Try to see if that will give you a missing solution or not. In this case, it will be. So let me just do the check for you guys real quick. Uh, if you let d plus 6 to be 0, d is what? x minus y, right? So let me put this down in blue for you guys. So we have x minus y and then plus 6 uh, equal to 0. All right, so oh, let me just make this in red. That makes me happier. Now it becomes purple. Anyways. We have x minus y plus 6 equal to 0. I can move the y to the other side, and we get y by itself, and then we get x plus 6, right? However, this is not missing solution because this right here, it actually belongs to the family of solution. And this right here is just the family of solutions, right? What it means that, what it means is that you can choose values for c, and in fact, if you let c equal to 0, and that's the way to get rid of this and that. If you let c equal to 0, this is out. This is also out. On the top, you have 6 over 1 on the bottom, right? You end up with x plus 6, right? x plus 6. So this right here actually belongs to the family, All right? I know I make a small mistake in class. I didn't see that, but uh, I'm correcting this in the video. x plus 6 is belonging to the family, so it's not missing solution. On the other hand, we also set this factor, d plus 4, equals to 0. And check this out. d is equal to x minus y, right? x minus y, and then we have the plus 4. We make this equal to 0. I'm going to move the y to the other side, so we get the y by itself, and this is equal to x plus 4. Right here, no matter what value you choose for c, and you see, in order for you to get rid of e to the 2x, c has to be 0, right? But when c is equal to 0, this is when c is equal to 0, you end up with y is equal to x plus 6. Well, this guy, y is equal to x plus 4. It's a solution to it, because the derivative of this is just 1. 
if you're plugging x plus 4 into this y here and you subtract, you know, minus y and then uh, x plus 5, you also end up with 1. So this right here is how you're going to find a possible missing solution. And we found it. This is a missing solution, x plus 4. So to be complete, you're going to include this and that together. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how you end up with the answer in the back of the book. Either you like it or you hate it. That's it.